Hey, this is Gamer Dom. Um, welcome back to my garage. I was going to do a quick video on matchmaking today. Um, that's because I think matchmaking is one of those things that, particularly newcomers to the game, um, struggle to grasp. Um, if I'm honest, there's um, quite a few players who've been around the game for quite a long time who struggle to grasp, judging by the um, inevitable comments you get in pretty much every game you go into where people are moaning about matchmaking and um, why am I in a, a tier 7 game and I'm in a tier 4 tank? Um, that just shows they don't grasp how, how the mechanics of the game work. So, I'll keep this really simple and if you want to read, if you want to do more, go and search on the internet. There's loads of detailed reports about how the mechanics of this thing work. Fundamentally, the, 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 the World of Tanks server, when you click that battle button it will review all the tanks that are sitting in the tier uh, sitting in the queue waiting to join the game it will look at what their tier is what their type of vehicle is and it will try and pull together two roughly equivalent teams of 15 tanks so it will try uh, to build out the same rough number of heavy tanks medium tanks light tanks and self-propelled guns it will also try and ensure that the weighting of those teams is the same so that each team has roughly the same number of tier of the top tier tanks it'll have roughly the same number of medium tanks and so forth sorry uh, top tier tanks second, one tier off tanks um, and low tier tanks so it will try and do that the one thing it does not do it doesn't look at the um, quality, supposed quality or ability or experience of the players in who are driving those tanks. So it's purely based on the vehicle itself. It doesn't also look at um, what sort of equipment you've got on your tank or whether you've unlocked the, every module on the tank. So for that, for that reason, a perfectly stock vehicle that you've just unlocked and put your crew in and click the button on has exactly the same value as somebody who is at the, who has unlocked every module on a tank and has deleted it completely matchmaking doesn't make that distinction so that's relatively straightforward now you do see exceptions uh, to the composition of teams and largely that's impacted by um, lack of availability of those vehicles or, um, or classes in the queue so there is a finite amount of time that you will sit in a, in the queue waiting to play your game and you'll notice this if you ever play odd, odd hours of night or day and there's less players on the server um, sometimes it can take longer than others to get into a match um, and the game tries to restrict the time that you wait and so sometimes it means it compromises on the composition of teams. Um, also, the time when it does affect the composition of the teams is when there's platoons, lots of platoons in the game, and they're mixed type platoons. So if they're, you know, there's a heavy, there's a medium, and there's a TD, that will affect how many of each class of tank there are in the, in the game itself. But largely, they'll try and ensure that there's the same, roughly the same number of heavies, mediums, and so forth, to within one. So their goal is that, I don't know, if there's five heavies on one team, there'll be no more than uh, six on the other team, or no less than four. So that's fairly straightforward. Um, there is all kinds of stuff around weighting of vehicles. You can read that. It's very difficult to explain. Um, but that's the fundamental of it. So the next thing to look at is what battles your tank can get into. So every tank has a tier, and that's fairly clear. You go on the tech tree, you can see the, all these vehicles here are tier 5, all these ones are tier 6. So the basic rule of thumb with tiers is that a tier 5 tank can fight in battles against tier 6s and tier 7s. It can see two classes above itself. That's the basic rule of thumb. So, we're going to look at 
my um, M46 pattern career here. It's a tier 8 medium tank, which means being a tier 8, it can see battles against tier 9s and tier 10s. Now, whether you get a tier 9 or a tier 10 is entirely random. People moan, I've only ever had, I've only ever been bottom tier every game I've played today and all this. Fred, that's just bad luck. And it does even out. We and we're, human nature is you tend to remember the times when it doesn't go so well for you and you forget all the times where you were top tier. The reality is it's random. Um, so, you know, a tier 8 tank should have exactly the same chance of being top tier or being a tier 9 or a tier 10. Should be. There is some suggestion that there is some weighting around different types of tanks, but I can find nothing to written to completely confirm that. So, like every rule, there's exceptions, right? So the exception to the, um, the rule about being two tiers or potentially seeing battles two tiers above you is the sort of tanks that you don't see as much as you used to, which are called preferential matchmaking tanks. So this Super Pershing has preferential matchmaking. It is also, like the Korea, a tier, nine, a tier 8 tank, but because it has preferential matchmaking, it will only see tier 8s or tier 9s as a maximum. It cannot see tier 10s. And the one time it can see a tier 10, and this is an important distinction, is if you were to platoon with another tank that could see tier 10s. So if I was to take my Super Pershing out and one of my buddies took out the pattern, because the pattern can see tier 10 and we're platooned together, my poor old Super Pershing could find itself in a tier 10 game. But if, it, if those conditions didn't apply, it will not see a tier 10 match. The reason why they did this for some of the early tanks and some of the some of the uh, preferential, some of the premium tanks that were brought out, is that they were deemed not to have any chance in a tier 10 game. So if you look at this thing, um, Super Pershing has only 170 penetration with its top, uh, with its well, it only gets one gun with its main gun using AP. The Pattern Korea has 192 standard penetration. So the feeling was that tanks like this, the, the Super Pershing, just weren't competitive enough to fight in Tier 10s, so they've been restricted. Now, Wargaming has reduced all these tanks, so you don't see them as much as you used to. Um, the, the few that are on sale at the moment, well, one of the ones that is definitely on sale at the moment that has preferential matchmaking, uh, if you can find it, is the IS-6. The IS-6 is a, um, here we go, it's a tier 8 Russian heavy tank, but it gets preferential making, so it will only see tier 8s and 9s as a maximum. Okay, so next exception to the matchmaking uh, to the tiering, sorry, is around light tanks. So light tanks are treated as a uh, medium tank one tier higher them than themselves. So let me give you an example. This tier 4 German light tank, the Lux, is treated as a tier 5 medium tank for the purposes of matchmaking which means it will never see a tier 4 game it can see a tier 5, 6 or 7 game now again this is one of the things you see most common in a game somebody driving a light tank particularly a newer player to the game and they're moaning the fact that how hell is my little 20mm cannon oh, sorry 30mm cannon um, going to penetrate a tier 7 uh, tank but it's this one's got 95 millimeters of penetration you know you're never going to penetrate uh, those sort of tanks well the simple reason is you're not really in the game to do that um, the light tank is as the name you know the, the class of tank that is light is a, is supposed to have a very specialized function which is to scout and locate the enemy and that's the role they're expected to play in this game. They are there um, to spot, to um, 
help your team know where the enemy is. And they get credit for that. So if you spot an enemy tank um, and your side shoot at that tank, you get credits and you get experience. I think it's roughly to half the value of the person who shot. So if they did, if they, for sake of argument, did uh, 200 damage on an enemy tank, it would be as though you'd done 100. So that means as a light tank, if you do a good job of scouting, you don't even have to fire shots. And you will generate experience and credits for you, and also help your team out. So that's why they do this with lights. And it works all the way up to tier 8. So the, there was the new tier 8 light tank that was brought into the game, the uh, M4190, the black dog or girlfriend. Um, and that is a tier 8 light tank. And because it's a tier 8, it will see tier 9s and 10s all the time. Um, so that's the basic rule with light tanks. Now, the only, and there, there are, of course, exceptions to this. So at tiers 1 and 2, you will only see one tier above yourself. So a tier 1 tank can only see tier 1s and 2s. A tier 2 tank can only see 2s and 3s as a maximum. And that's because, again, it's those tanks are not competitive against tier 3s, 4s and 5s. Um, and it wouldn't be fair for new players, particularly who are tend to be playing those sort of tanks, to suddenly find themselves in a battle against tier 5 tanks where they have absolutely no idea what to do um, and they just lose heart in the game and drop out. So tier 1s and 2s can only see one tier above them. The other exception is a tier 3 game. So tier 3 is treated like every other, every other tier. So a tier 3 will see two classes above itself unless it has preferential. So a tier 3 medium will see a tier 4 or tier 5 game um, as, as often as it will see a tier 3. The exception is the light tank. So if you have a light tank at tier 3, you will only see one class above yourself. And that's because the distinction at lower tiers between tier 3 lights and tier 3 mediums is fairly mute. You, it's very difficult to see the difference. Um, they're pretty, both have very limited armor, both have pretty weak guns. So effectively, a light is just like a medium. So a tier, three, um, a tier 3 light tank is pretty much the same as a tier 3 medium tank. Certainly is for the purposes of matchmaking. So that's all very clear. So then when you go up to tier 4, where my little Lux here sits, um, the normal scout light tank rules apply. It is a light tank at tier 4. It can therefore see up to three classes, three tiers above itself. So, yeah, that's something to be very, very clear about. And the biggest challenge, I think, is when you get around the tier 3s, um, and tier 4 tanks because people don't realize they've come through the um, yes yeah, so here we go so this is a toady um, it's a tier 3 light tank and people have come through playing lower tier tanks and quite happily and they've been in their light tanks and they haven't realized that it's a light tank because it plays exactly the same as a medium so but then they platoon up with somebody who's in a tier 4 and suddenly their light tank has to fight, play in tier 5 and 6 games. So just be really careful. Now one of the things you can get, you may have noticed down here on my um, screen, if you can see it, um, that it, in the boxes uh, here, it tells me what tier these tanks can see. So it tells me this toady, this, I can see 3 to 5 as it's uh, tiering. This um, OP Panzer 2J, it says 3 and 4, which means it will only ever see tiers 3 and 4. So if you're in any doubt, look out for a mod that does this and shows it, because it's really, really useful. And if you're in any doubt, you can see it. So this VK3001H, it's a tier 5. It can see a tier 5s to tier 7s. So that's basically how it works. You have, um, so let's go back over it again. Rule of thumb, all tanks 
we'll see battles where um, that are potentially two tiers above them. So a tier five or tier could see a tier uh, could be in a top tier game. So it could be in a tier five game. It could be in a tier six game or it could be a tier seven game. It will not get to a tier eight game unless it is a light tank or it um, is drawn in through a platoon that you've set up. So the tank that it's with or tanks that it's with um, could potentially see that higher tier. Exceptions, of course, as I mentioned, are light tanks. They will always be treated as a medium tank of a class higher than themselves. Um, and the lower tier tanks, so classes um, tiers one and two, will only see one class above themselves. Tier three light tanks will only see two classes above themselves, not the normal three. Clear as mud? I'm trying to make that as simple to understand as, as humanly possible. I would urge you to go and have a look um, on some of the in the sort of help files that uh, Wargaming maintain. There are there is a really interesting and very useful graph that shows this. Let me try and find it for you. I couldn't find the one on Wargaming site, but um, this is this is a copy of it. So this very clearly shows you. If you are sitting in a tier 5 medium tank, you can be in a top tier game, so you're a tier 5 tank and you're in tier 5 game, or you could be in a tier 6 or a tier 7. You won't be in 8, 9, nor 10 based on, unless you have you know, a platoon mate that draws you in or some other reason why you're drawn in. If you were on a tier 5 light tank, Remember I said you are classed as one class higher than yourself, as though you're a medium tank of a class higher. And it's very clearly shown here. So this light tank, tier 5, doesn't have a tier 5 match. It can't see a tier 5 game. You can only see 6, 7, or 8. Back at the lower tiers, tiers 1 and 2 uh, can only see the one tier above themselves. Tier 3 lights are treated exactly the same as tier 3 mediums, or heavies for that matter. And it goes all the way down. So, hope that, hope that was helpful to you. Hope it wasn't even more confusing. But hopefully next time when you're playing the game and you're getting frustrated by matchmaking um, and wondering why your little light tank is fighting in a game that's a much higher tier than you and you can't, you got, haven't got a hope of penetrating anything, just make sure that uh, if you're doing that, you know, next time don't take a light tank if you can't handle that. If you don't want to do the scouting, if you don't want to do the spotting, um, don't take a light tank. Go and take a medium. Go and take a TD. So, hope that's helpful. If it is, please consider giving this a video a like. Um, if it's not, let me know in the comments. Um, matchmaking is one of those things that... Um, People complain about one of the most things in the game. Um, people moan about the fact it's uh, you know somehow rigged or not fair or anything else. Um, personally, I think I get very frustrated. Obviously, like everyone else, when I click into my game and I'm bottom tier, and every other tank in the game seems to have you know, the the players in the other team seem to be much much better than mine. Um, but it is just one of those things, and it does tend to come around in circles. Um, the the only thing I would really like them to do in some way, if there's a way of doing it, is around um, uh, rating players. So you don't get the situation where um, all the players on the enemy team are so, so much better than players on your team. And it do, that does seem to happen rather a lot. Uh, I'd love it if it was evened out, so you had all the sort of um, super unicorn players spread out across the two teams, rather than all being in one team, which often seems to happen from what I can see. But uh, maybe it's just I'm unlucky. So anyway, let me know what you think. Um, this has been Game Dom. I hope this has been helpful. Um, enjoy your games, have fun, um, but you know, learn about the mechanics of how things work because it will make life a lot easier. So this is Game Dom. Signing out. See you again soon. Thanks for watching.